Uh, a couple other questions uh, for you today, Jerome. Uh, the first one I want to touch on, I know it's a topic that uh, you, uh, you cherish, is the role of mentorship in research and then in life at large. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, I can say that <clears throat> the, you know, four or five or six key mentors that I had made all the difference in my life. Uh, Mike Uhas, he didn't even know he was mentoring me. <laughs> I don't think, but he did. Uh, Brian Spruill made the same thing when I see him years later and I, I got a nice award that they give to old guys if you hang around. And I was out in Vancouver and I was giving my, being introduced and I looked down and there it's Dr. Spruill. And I, I almost came to tears just to thank him. And he came after and he said, Jerry, I really didn't do much for you. But you see, he did. He did, just by being him. Mm. Um, and then uh, Dr. Rankin, uh, when I was younger, and maybe uh, it's carried over even a bit to the older age, I, I got in a fair bit of trouble scientifically because I shot my mouth off a lot and I questioned a lot and got involved in some one decade long controversy on a very, at the time, um, pretty popular question that we kind of showed wasn't true. And so, but Dr. Rankin always defended me and he always said, okay, yeah, they're beating on you and you shoot your mouth up too much, but you know, hang in there and keep questioning. And they, and that kind of mentorship is so important. Um, and so I, I wasn't a very good mentor at the beginning. I was so driven and so uh, intent in these controversies that I got involved in that I can remember examples I'd give anything to have that opportunity to mentor that young man or woman again. Um, uh, and I've apologized to these people since then. It's too late, but I did. But I, I got better over time because I had saw other people that were so important to me. Hey, just the example of a, a mentor is a man by the name of Vladimir Fensel, now dead those past 10 years, at Harvard University. He wasn't even a full professor there. He was a refugee from Czechoslovakia. Man, this guy knew acid base status. And, and that's a very difficult topic, very complex, better than anybody I knew in the world, both applied and basic. And when we got involved in this big controversy, we couldn't get papers published, nobody believed us. He hung in there with us and he would mentor me from afar. This is before the internet. Nobody talked like this. It was on phone, it was by handwritten letters. It was, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it, it got to the point where he even repeated our experiment showed that we were right to that extent. But it was his mentoring over the phone and not, and not just on science, but to try and not let these controversials get personal. That's so important. Science has to remain objective. My gosh, in the US, we've seen plenty of examples of this in the past, I'll be precise, four years, where science is denigrated to, to the fault of all of us, for God's sake. So um, he taught me that. So I think this is really important and I've learned to, and so mentoring has really become, I think, the most important part of my job. It's not that the science isn't. I mean, that's what your, that's your common denominator you have with the mentee mm -hmm. and that has to be good. Uh, another part of mentoring, my um, try to get involved in, in uh, the social enterprise in our, in our country and throughout the world, I found I, I involved in the 60s with anti-war movements and, and anti-racism movements. And I, they're very important. And there are a lot of people that are really good at them. And my heroes like Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy were, were great at that. And I admire them. Mm -hmm. But I tried it, but I wasn't very good at it in a group. So I started to mentor children without fathers uh, through programs. And now in the past year, I've gotten involved in mentoring ex-convicts. And uh, this one-on-one -on -one, uh, relationship you get with people can really be important, um, both to you 
and to the mentee. So I'm a, I'm, I'm a big believer in mentorships and I'm a big believer in young people starting their careers, grabbing on to people. Uh, my, one of my guys scientifically was the late Big Saltine. I'm sure you've heard of, he's probably the world's best exercise physiologist ever and trained more people from all over the world in Copenhagen than anybody did. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I remember running into him uh, in the late 60s at a meeting and uh, he was giving us one of his new theories and I told him I didn't believe him. I said, this, that's ridiculous. It doesn't certainly apply to the respiratory system. We became fast friends for the rest of our careers. And, and he wasn't a respiratory guy, but if I had anything in the exercise field where I really wanted honest, learned, educated feedback, I got a hold of him. And so he wasn't a formal mentor of mine or anything, but he was always there. And all the conversations with him were absolutely wonderful. And uh, uh, certainly dictated. And uh, the other mentors I've had are people that um, I disagree with. And several of them still think I'm nuts about a lot of our ideas. Um, and they make you do your research better mm -hmm. because, okay, you may have finished that experiment. You think, yep, yeah, there's the answer. And then you think, oh, wait a minute. What would Meg D. Eunice in Winnipeg say? Or what would Tom Hornbein out in Seattle say? Or John Severino say? So you go back and you do a few more reproducibility experiments or test your hypothesis a different way to make sure. Um, so those guys drive you too. And you become fast friends with pretty well all of them. Mm. Some you can't quite get to that point, I must admit, but um, uh, pretty well all of them. If, if, it, uh, if you had a piece of advice for those listening, uh, maybe a two, two part question. Part one, how, do you, how to be a good mentor and part two, how to be a good mentee. Oh yeah. Let's start with the mentee. Um, I think the how you choose your mentor is really important. Just because you happen to be, say, at your local university, the, um, the world's your horizon. Go for it. Um, what you see in the literature, what you see at a meeting what you hear from other people around you about good mentors. Um, don't limit yourself. Go for it. Uh, I remember when I first came to the University of Wisconsin, I couldn't believe it. My God, I must have done five seminars a week. Uh, and, and I got to the point where I said, gosh, I want to ask that guy some more questions. I was uh, 22 years old or something and didn't know what the hell I was talking about. And I found out that these people want to talk to you. Scientists love to talk about their work, ad nauseum sometimes. And so I started knocking on doors and I haven't stopped. Mm -hmm. I haven't stopped. I, and the older I get, the more brazen I get about asking fundamental questions. I'm not afraid to anymore. Who, I don't care about my reputation much anymore. And, and I'm not submitting grants anymore, so I don't care who's, who I'm. <laughs> who I'm talking to. I really don't. Um, another part on the, yeah, so that's what I would say to the mentee. And then, yeah, you don't do everything your mentor suggests you do, but you you count on him and or her. And you, um, uh, well, about seven or eight or nine years into my career as a scientist, nothing was going right. Uh, experiments were failing. The questions I was asking were stupid. Uh, I was looking for quick answers to things. And I resigned. I resigned from my assistant professorship at the University of Wisconsin. And uh, I was teaching medical students at the time and I decided I'll go to medical school. That's a lot more straightforward. Just go and treat somebody. Don't you worry about coming up with hard and good questions and what new methods you have to learn or any of that people do it for you and um uh my mentor talked me out of it he talked me out of it and uh i changed the whole way i was doing things and so that's really how important uh, a mentor can be 
And so, and as far as a career as a scientist, well, I, I, I mean, I wish I'd have been good enough to be a major league baseball player, but that wasn't in the cards. I couldn't, my best pitches couldn't break a pane of glass. So I had to resort to plan B. And, um, but certainly I don't regret it. I'm still doing it. I mean, it's, even though my lab is now closed as of the past year, um, you can still write what I call opinion pieces. You can go on and be interviewed by insightful young people like you and maybe get some of your messages across and maybe some of those people that are hearing them think, uh, oh, let's give this guy some feedback that we don't agree with everything he says. So that's another part of, of um, getting a little older in this that you have to, you're now defending your turf to some extent, but you have to become a good listener now and, and realize that you might be wrong on certain things. And that's certainly true. And, and, and I've struggled with that, but I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. And I think that's what we can really teach our mentees to seek out criticism, to seek out feedback, to seek out the best people you can about your science. Um, and uh, you can't go wrong.